Hi everyone, welcome to Forbes Flash. Thanks for joining, let's get started. And stick around, because later we'll have Forbes reporter Michael Del Castillo talking about IBM's new blockchain technology. Ever wondered who the richest person is in your state? Now you can find out. For the fourth year in a row, we've put together that very list of 53, because of ties, very rich people. Altogether, their fortunes add up to $832 billion. The most popular way to make their money? Finance and investing, followed by food and beverage. Surprised that I didn't say tech? Well, there's some of those guys on the list, and they're the richest of the rich. Like Jeff Bezos, who's the wealthiest in his adopted home state of Washington. Only six U.S. states aren't home to a billionaire. Here's looking to you, Alabama, Alaska, Delaware, New Mexico, North Dakota, and Vermont. You'll have to make do with your multi-millionaires for now. Here's a few stories you might have missed this past week. The opening for San Francisco's new tallest building turned into a discussion about tech companies and their impact on communities, thanks to Mark Benioff. The billionaire CEO of Salesforce took the stage to thank everyone involved in the years-long process of building the 1,070-foot tall Salesforce tower. Today is a milestone, but it is not the finish line. There are still thousands of people who are homeless. We're going to raise $200 million to get every homeless individual off these streets. One in three American adults, that's 80 million people, is a member of Credit Karma, using the company's free services. Interest in those services, which includes anytime access to credit scores and alerts of new accounts opened in their names, spiked 50% last year after the Equifax breach. The company has built a good guy reputation, but is also making millions off the data of its members. While protecting member data is its number one priority, according to the company, you wouldn't be wrong to be wary of sharing access to your accounts. Even if you delete your Credit Karma account, your data will be stored on its servers for another two years before it's anonymized. Speaking of timetables, aviation startup Zunum Aero has a really ambitious one. They're hoping to bring hybrid electric planes to market as soon as 2022. And with backing by Boeing and JetBlue, they might achieve their goal. The 12 passenger plane is to be powered by two big electric fans driven by batteries and supplemented by power from a gas turbine generator that would shut down once the plane reaches cruising altitude. Initial test flights are planned for 2019, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. The world's biggest tech companies have consolidated their power in recent years, driving huge profits and soaring market values. Another of their most important features, a powerful brand value. Tech brands are the most valuable in the world, with Apple at the top for the eighth straight year. The company's brand is worth $182.8 billion, which is 8% more than last year. Following after Apple on the list of most valuable brands is Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon. <music> Forbes co-hosted the first ever Idea Summit this week, a day-long summit about diversity and inclusion in business. To catch up on insights from speakers Jesse Williams, Tina Chen, Micah Fowler, and many more, check out hashtag Forbes Idea on social. <music> The ACLU is demanding that Amazon stop selling a facial recognition tool to U.S. law enforcement agencies. In a letter to CEO Jeff Bezos, the group and supporters highlighted the dangers of systems that bear resemblance to an authoritarian surveillance state. The tool, called Recognition, can recognize up to 100 people in a single image and is capable of quickly finding faces in databases containing tens of millions of photos. Joining us now is Forbes reporter Michael Del Castillo to discuss IBM's new blockchain tech. Earlier this week, uh, Forbes broke a story about IBM doing a really unusual blockchain story. In fact, it's not directly blockchain itself. What they have done is give their best effort to build a link between the real world and the distributed ledger technology otherwise known as blockchain. The way that they've done that is by taking two pieces, um, a, a really, really, really sophisticated lens that is capable of seeing details as small as a micron, which lets them distinguish cells of animals, and artificial intelligence. And they've merged those two together to look at everyday objects like bottles of wine, bottles of olive oil, and make judgments about them. Are, are they real? Where might they have come from? Uh, d are they the same diamonds or the same uh, bottles of wine that were exported on the other side of the world earlier? The, the technology itself, um, developed by IBM, uh, which is called the Crypto Anchor Verifier, uh, is actually really cool in its own right, but when you integrate it with a blockchain, it really becomes supercharged. 
in a way that I think is going to be very attractive to the supply chain world, generally speaking. What I found really exciting about this technology is, uh, unlike a lot of other blockchain applications that uh, is kind of abstract and esoteric, this is something that you can literally hold on to. And IBM actually visualizes this as uh, um, not just a, a business to business product, but as a retail product. So you can quite literally imagine yourself in a world where you go to the bar and get a glass of whiskey, you, you can take a picture of the whiskey and see if the bartenders watered it down. You can uh, make sure that that fancy bottle of wine you bought for your date is actually a fancy bottle of wine. Um, the, 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 the real world applications of this aren't just um, at the moment when um, a material is removed from the earth or the moment that that material is cut and turned into a product. You can actually use it, normal people could theoretically use it in the restaurant or in the bar or at home to learn about what is going on in their life. And what really makes that possible is that this isn't a clunky huge piece of hardware. In fact, it's a piece of software that you can download to a smartphone and uh, a piece of hardware, the lens itself, that literally slips over the smartphone's existing camera. So if you take a look at this crypto anchor identifier, what you're really looking at is a souped up smartphone. The first use case of blockchain has been the financial sector, and that's in large part because the first application of blockchain, which is a distributed shared ledger of transactions, was cryptocurrency, i.e. Bitcoin. However, uh, any uh, transaction that results in the movement of one form of value to another could theoretically be used on a blockchain or any dis another distributed ledger technology. Two weeks ago, we actually saw um, the former head of big four accounting firm Deloitte's blockchain announce uh, an effort to raise $150 million to disrupt the defense supply chain industry. That same week, we saw the maker of the iPhone, Foxconn, and, uh, participate in an investment round in a blockchain startup. And this most recent endeavor between IBM and the Gemological Institute of America uh, has the potential to streamline uh, GIA's $331 million worth of revenue a year. So there's a lot of money at stake here and a lot of big players experimenting. Since the early days of blockchain, which was all of nine years ago, we've actually gone from purely experimental applications to a lot of more meaningful uh, use cases that could impact real companies and perhaps save or make real money for existing companies. Beyond finance and even beyond supply chain, uh, we're, we're looking to the future at entire industries that stand to be streamlined as a result of moving their workflows to the shared distributed ledger. There's two industries in particular that, are, that really jump out as perhaps being just on the horizon here. The first one is the, the medical industry. Um, we've all experienced having to move doctors and having the, your new doctor know nothing about who you are or your medical history. And you, of course, have no idea your own medical history because that's what your doctor's there to know, right? Well, by moving those records to a shared, a shared ledger, we could actually streamline that entire process. And it would no longer be your old doctor faxing papers to your new doctor, but everybody would have access to that in a, in a permissioned way. The, the, the other um, industry that's potentially being disrupted by uh, blockchain technology is real estate. Uh, I'm actually personally going through the process of buying a house right now. And um, we, we were four months into our first house purchase when we discovered that some of the paperwork that we needed had been missing for 50 years and no one knew. By moving these sorts of processes, uh, by moving licenses, by moving um, certificates, of, certificates of occupancy that are uh, required to make real estate deals to a shared distributed ledger, you would put an end to going four months into a transaction before you realize that some fundamental parts weren't there. Thanks for joining us. Tweet your feedback using hashtag Forbes Flash, and we'll see you next week. Tune in every Friday morning, same time, same place.